evening everyone. It's time for Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. Today I want to talk about connecting with crystals and we're going to have some fun playing with some crystals. So let's get started. Good morning again. Welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz and today I want to talk about connecting with crystals. Uh, we're going to have some fun today, this week actually, and next week. We're going to talk about how to establish a relationship with the crystal and I'll share some stories and you're welcome to chime in and tell us where you're joining from and any crystal stories you'd like to share or any questions you have about crystals. So let's get started. This is Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz. I'm in Seattle, Washington. I'm an intuitive and spiritual consultant and past life regression specialist. And I love crystals. <laughs> I really enjoy crystals. My crystal partner, Fallon, is a citrine Lemurian quartz. But today I want to talk with you about crystals in a different way than people normally do. So join in. Um, let me know where you're joining from and uh, you know, maybe name some of your favorite crystals. So we often think of crystals as tools, as tools to help us be better spiritually, um, even physically and emotionally. So body, mind, and spirit, right? And you can read all kinds of books out there and some books with beautiful pictures um, that follow up from years of working with crystals so they can give you an idea of a crystal that might work best for you. For example, if you're looking for balance and grounding, you know, people tend to direct you towards black or brown crystals or even clear quartz. Um, for, for emotions or for love, it would be amethyst or crystals like that. And so there's a whole category of crystals and you can find within those categories crystals that might appeal to you personally. But I'd like you to take it a step further and look at what crystals really are, okay? So, I work with the planet, and I know from working with the planet that everything is alive and conscious and has a soul and is equal to us and has a job to do and a responsibility to do that job, but also free choice. And I can tell you from personal experience, everything out there has an opinion, right? So this is a different way of living in the world than our culture has taught us. And the more people that just leap in and establish a relationship with the planet and with all beings on it, the more fun you have, the more balanced and grounded you are, and the less lonely you are because you realize we're not the only sentient beings on the planet. Everything else is sentient too. Which brings me back to sharing um, crystals with you. And really, I've got a few crystals I want to share their personal stories with you today to give you an idea of what you can experience on your own. Now, of course, you want to fine tune your intuition so you know that if you're having a conversation with a crystal, that would be your clear audience, right? Your ability to hear. But there's also feelings and seeing pictures and just knowing. So bring all of your intuitive abilities to play when you work with crystals and they'll support you. But remember, they're sentient like we are. They're also a lot older. I mean, we humans are in our bodies maybe a hundred years, sometimes a few more than that. But most of us, you know, that's a drop in the bucket compared to how long a crystal lives, right? So crystals have a lot of experience, they have a lot of knowledge, they have a lot to share with you if you're willing to treat them as an equal and share with them. And that means treating them as a partner, not as a tool, right? The next thing to do would be to, if you're looking at a variety of crystals in a book, for example, and then you get to go to a crystal store that's open wherever you are during the pandemic, and you can explore the crystals in person, you can actually ask them, um, what what do you want to do? What, what do you think your work is in the world? And would you be interested in working with me? And I'll tell you a story about that. So here's a crystal I want to share with you. This is a Shiva Lingam. Isn't this amazing? And it's huge. It fits in my hand, right? And so years and years ago, um, I asked someone, what do you think a good crystal would be for me? Because I was just getting started with crystals. 
This was long before I met my crystal partner, Fallon. And that person said, Shiva Lingam. So I thought, well, I'm going to concentrate on that and think about it. And I felt good about it. So I decided to go look for one. And I got out of my car in a near neighborhood in Seattle. I live in Seattle. And my intuition and my uh, inner sense of knowing took me to a metaphysical store there. And I asked for um, to look at their Shiva Lingams. And I said, but this particular crystal stone actually um is not really readily visible and they looked at me kind of like who are you <laughs> and they went to a a crystal book or a glass fronted bookcase and they opened the bookcase and they pulled up from the very bottom shelf right so you couldn't see it if you were just casually glanced they pulled out this stone and i swear to you it was blinding me i mean i just I was like, whoa, right? So after spending a few minutes with it and, you know, it was like, yes, this feels like my crystal. I bought it and I took it home. And that's when the magic really happened, right? Because when I got it home, they had wrapped it in um, tissue paper, you know, solid so that it wouldn't, you know, get banged around. But that was a tissue paper in a sack. And when I reached into the sack and pulled the crystal out, it was so hot, I could barely touch it. I was like, what? How did that happen? And um, and I uh, was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And then I put it on the table. And over the next few days, it would get very hot and very cold. It had just changed over the course of the day. There wasn't sunlight on it. There wasn't anything but this very dramatic display. And a friend later told me, she goes, well, that's a sign that the crystal is, is yours, right? And that was before I learned to communicate with them. And, and sure enough, this crystal um, has been a very treasured member of my, I keep, which direction do I go? For many years, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I use it for balance and grounding too. I also use it for working with the planet. <coughs> Sorry. I do a lot of work with land and weather systems, for example. And so this is really good. Shiva Lingam is found only in one place in the world, in India. And you can find them all in this shape. But, you know, look at the markings on this, how extraordinary it is. Very, very beautiful. And... Um, so I've treasured this crystal for a long time, but what did it teach me? The fact that it reacted with that hot and cold, the fact that I felt drawn to it, those are all, for me, indications that this crystal and I were both ready and able to establish a relationship with each other. Um, and uh, that hasn't happened very often with a lot of my crystals, but it was a very dramatic example, and because it was really the first crystal that I bought you know I had no preconceptions about what to think about connecting with crystals so I like to tell that story to give you an idea of what you could actually create in setting up an equal relationship with crystals so um, feel free to chime in here um, and let me know if you've got any I'm trying to scroll through here and see if anybody's left any comments so that's one story, the Shiva Lingam. So the point of that story is, if you have a particular need, like um, I have issues with eyes, and there are lots of crystals that people say could help with a physical issue, uh, experiment for yourself and find out what works for you, or even if you just enjoy being with a crystal and enjoy having them as members of your family, because uh, they're beautiful and they really do have a really long history and be willing to experiment be willing to be awed by nature and um, and enjoy um, the fun that you could have with a crystal so here's another crystal i want to share a story with this is carnelian and uh, i'm going to hold it up because in this shape it looks like a heart shape right and I found this crystal in North Carolina in a crystal shop there years ago. 
and um, I work with clients and I use crystals a lot in my work with clients and um, I was looking for something for like what we would call a root chakra crystal you know something for getting people really connected to survival and well-being and survival there's reproduction so sexual all of those kinds of things I was looking for a crystal that would really help clients get grounded into their bodies and to really identify with survival issues on a mind body spirit level so carnelian is a red stone so it's the orange red orange stone and it's often uh, considered a root chakra stone well when I started working with clients they would hold a crystal and then they would put it right here in their hearts like put it on their body in a place that they felt drawn to and it became very obvious over time and in my working with the crystal that it really wanted to be basically a heart stone you know uh, what you might call a heart chakra stone or a love connection stone so the point of that story let me just bring this up so you can see it again and you can connect with this crystal and see what it's telling you or what you're getting from it um, the point is crystals are alive like we are they have souls they have opinions right they have all kinds of similar feelings that we have and they have jobs to do right and they may want to do a different job right so just because our research with crystals over the years tells us carnelian is is a root chakra for stability and making your way in the world and this particular one wants to work with people's hearts it wants to help you expand into self-love and connection um, expanding beyond survival needs into finding purpose and, and love and attraction in your life um, that's what that crystal wants to do and it's fine I, I love it I enjoy having it as part of the family so just remember when you're finding a crystal to work with and you look at a category in a book and then you meet them like here's online here are some crystals for sale or you go to a store that's safe to go to right now um, you can ask the crystal uh, what is it that you want to do um, would you like to be part of my family uh, can I assist you in doing what you want to do and you may be surprised by the answer and you may find room in your household for a crystal that wants to be a little bit different just like we do sometimes um, so be open-minded I guess would be an answer to the question that question and uh, finally for today and I'm, we're going to continue this conversation next week on how to be connected to crystals and how to work with them and play with them um, and again all my crystals are family members I was with a crystal dealer one day when I spotted this a large piece of amethyst so this is my personal small piece of amethyst right just to give you an idea of what amethyst looks like but um, this particular amethyst was larger and I immediately thought of a friend of mine who might want it and I called her and she said yes I want that crystal so we packed it up and I took it home and as I unwrapped it to put it on the table it bit me <laughs> and I know you're gonna say what it bit you um, so you can say well yeah there's sharp pointed uh, open crystals but it literally did bite me and I bled and I was like wait why are you being so rude like what is your problem and the crystal did not want to be with me it was afraid it didn't want to be there it was afraid of my crystal foul and it said we were truth tellers and it didn't want you know its truth to come out and I was like okay whatever just packed it up and I sent it to my friend and that crystal's name is James and we called him the wounded amethyst for a long time and he was in the right place with his friend and he calmed down over time and he told us this is something that, that I think everyone should know is well the person that I bought it from for my friend is a really reputable dealer and takes really great care of her crystals there's nothing we can do about their lives before they came to us and this crystal had had a hard life it had been harshly mined and it had been harshly cared for a lot of crystals are kept in the dark locked away or in drawers or someplace you know they, they like to be out you know in the light of day just like we do 
Um, and James just felt that he wasn't secure enough, that he wasn't good enough as a crystal to do his work. And that being in my household where he met Fallon, who my big uh, Citrine Lemurian Quartz is the truth teller, that this would come out about him, that he didn't feel secure enough. And my friend gave him a lot of love and he quickly became a member of her family. He's now a friend uh, for me and, and my Crystal Fallon and he works with us and my friend when we work with uh, clients or when we do uh, work on our own. But it's just a story to tell you that, wow, um, crystals do have minds of their own, they do have souls, they do have jobs to do, they do have feelings like we do. And the more we can relate to that, you know, we're really relating to them as family members, as partners in work, and, and they're not tools to be directed at something. They, they have their own idea of work that they can do. And when you invite them to partner with you, it really expands your world. You become aware of how amazing the world really is and how much we have left to learn. So um, come back next week. Um, we're going to talk more about crystals, about identifying crystals. Um, you're welcome to share stories. Um, but if you're going to go out and look for crystals, for Christ Christmas presents for yourself or others, be sure you find a reputable dealer to buy from. It doesn't mean they'll be the least expensive crystals, but it means that they'll start out their lives with you being healthy. So thank you for joining me today. Again, my name is Robin Fritz. Um, I do um, intuitive and spiritual consulting and past life regression work. You can find me here on Facebook at The Practical Intuitive Robin M. Fritz. And you can find me at my website, robinfritz.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z dot com. So take care. Uh, we'll see you next week, the first Monday in December. And thanks for joining me.